In this tutorial we're going to be adding the character of Shantae to the Scorpion Engine demo for Alex Kidd. Uh, first thing we need to do is, if we haven't done it already, we need to download the latest copy of Scorpion. So we can do that through the GitHub repository for the demos. Just uh, download the zip right here. Next thing we need is a sprite sheet. I'll grab this one right here from Sprite as Resource. Uh, all I'll need to do here is I'll need to take this image and then crop out the individual frames that I want. So what I need to do for the next step is create a folder inside the Demo Projects Alex Kid Sprites folder. I've called it Shante and I've manually cut out all of the frames that I want for the animations that I want. So I've got the attack animation, the fall animation, the idle animation, the walk animation, and the jump animation. Okay, as the next step, we need to run our Scorpion animation editor. We need to open our project, make sure we've got the right one under Demo, Demo Projects Alex Kid. Now, the first thing we'll see are all the animations that are already in the game. Uh, but obviously we want to add a new one for Shante, so the add button. Uh, we have to save it in the Shante folder, so I will call this Shan Shante Idle Write. Uh, because I saved that in the same folder as the frames, uh, they're all listed right here, and I can add them straight to animation. So. The idle animation, all I need to do is I just need to click on each of these individual frames. Now that isn't quite right, we need to align the character. In fact, we'll align it to the top half of the grid. We can use the cursor keys to go back and forth to make sure uh, everything's aligned. There we go, perfect. I've gone ahead and made all of the animations. I'm not totally sure that they're perfectly lined, but they'll do for this tutorial. The next thing we need to do is we need to create the melee hitbox for the character. So we use this frame as the one where it applies damage. Uh, we need to tick that it has a tick box, uh, has a hitbox. Uh, let's, let's make it fairly generous. Um, make it so that almost the entire length of our hair will do damage. All right, and there's only one more thing we need to do in the Scorpion animation editor, which is We've created all of the right-facing animations. We need to create the left-facing ones. So we'll cheat a little bit. I'll go copy animation. I'll call this Shante Attack Left. Then for each of these frames, I'll click Flip. We'll need to realign them manually. There we go. Yeah, I went ahead and made all the mirrored animations, so all we need to do now is we run the Scorpion editor. Make sure I've got the right project. Just 
check a list of animation strips and yep we've um, we can see our shanty animations there so let's go to the alex kid character and we'll just swap out those animations right down here we want the idle idle right uh, we can see that the the alignment of the character is different, so we'll have to move her a bit so that she fits in. So she lines with the start box. Uh, we'll also change the uh, the position of the collision detection box to here. We can change the uh, size of that collision box, but just for now, we'll just leave it like that. Just going to correct those. Okay, I think that's right. Well, we'll give it a test in WinUE just to see what it looks like. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, there's some obvious problems with the um, the collision of the hair that we can fix. Um, there's another obvious issue which the um, uh, the palette's a little bit messed up. Uh, that's because we haven't added the palette for the character to the game. We're only using the 16 colors that the game was already using. So let's um, let's fix that next. Okay, so right now I'm going to edit the palette. Um, so the palette stored in a standard PNG file. Uh, we can edit it from here. Uh, Corel Paint Shop Pro is the image editor I recommend. Um, you may prefer Photoshop or GIMP or something else, but any a uh, decent graphics editor should work. Uh, so you can see we've got a 15 color game or 16 color game. What we'll do is we'll increase a color depth to uh, 16 bits so that we can get the full um, full palette. I will grab one of the frames of Shante and then I'll put her uh, put her on the palette. And if I go decrease color depth. Um, I'll bring it back down to 256 colors and I'll just make sure that I've got 32 colors or less. Okay, the number of unique colors in this image is 29. That's good. So uh, because we've gone from 16 colors up to 29, it means it is going to add an extra bit plane, which will make the game slower on Amiga 500. Uh, but um, if we were to make a Shante game, we could possibly look at making a more optimized palette than this. So I'll just save that. I'll go back to here. I run the game. Hopefully that will look a little bit better. 
Uh, there's one other issue, it, um, which is the OCS chipset. Um, of course, it doesn't support full 24-bit color. It's only 12-bit color. So we might still not get the color range that we want, but it should be all right. And yeah, that, um, that looks pretty good. Okay, now that I've seen the animation in action, uh, there's a couple of obvious problems that I need to fix, so I'll do that right now. Let's reopen our project. Um, we'll go to the tech frame. Now, it, so she wasn't able to hit uh, blocks that were close to her, so I'll just make it a bit more generous. I'll um, Actually, yeah, I'll just go overboard and give her a massive, um, massive hitbox. So that's the first thing. The other thing is she animates a bit too slowly. It looks like she's in slow motion. So uh, by default, uh, when we import a um, add a frame, it sets it to a delay of five frames, so that's five PAL frames. Uh, let's try it at three. Try it again. Yep, I think that's a bit more natural. 